Howdy. Welcome back to the Montana shop. My name's Sam. I'm the man behind the hammers here at Alex Steel Co. And we got a super fun video for you guys today. We're gonna be building the latest and greatest build a knife box, the Hunter Recurve. So included in every Hunter Recurve build a knife box, we have a piece of G10, a block of desert ironwood, our 1075 laser cutout blank, and a 3 16 drill bit. So a couple of additional items that would be super helpful to have. Um, you're gonna wanna drill, a Bill Banky file guide is gonna help you with your grinding and your plunge lines. We also recommend getting a Black Dragon Forge handle brooch if you haven't already. And in addition with that, it's always handy to have a good set of files on hand. So a pro tip, you're gonna wanna take your five minute epoxy and throw it in the garbage. And you're gonna wanna pick up this epoxy from Combat Abrasives. I really like it. It's 30 minute working time, one hour cure. So for those of you who are just starting out knife making, it's hugely helpful when you're doing glue ups and something isn't quite right, you don't have to sweat it because you have a whole 30 minutes to work. And so a couple of other things, I like using a vise and a block of wood to attach the knife to as I'm doing some hand sanding. And then I like this big clamp for doing glue ups on hidden tangs. You see I have a little piece of wood glued onto the end there to protect the tip of the knife so it doesn't break off. All right, we're gonna be using the poor man's height gauge. I've put blue dicum around the blank and I'm taking our 3 16 drill bit and I'm gonna use that and this flat table to scribe a center line so that way when we grind our bevels, our edge is completely centered within the blank. All right, so we're about to head into the grinding room, but first I'm gonna give myself kind of a guide right here. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and kind of give a rough line as to how I want my bevel to look. So we're gonna be using our file guide to get a really clean plunge line. And then two other things that I need to be careful of is that I want this top line to be nice and consistent on both sides. And I want the edge of the knife to be centered on that scribe line. In addition with that, we are gonna taper the tang in both directions. And since we're at 3 16 thick, we got a good bit of thickness to work with. I'm actually gonna grind in a shoulder on both sides. That way when we fit up our G10 bolster, there should hopefully be no daylight. All right, we're gonna get our file guide on our blank. Using our Sharpie as just a really rough layout. And remember that the file guide is not a clamp. It doesn't have to be on super tight. Just get it good and snugged up so it won't move around. So I'm starting off with a 36 grit belt to do some heavy stock removal. And then from there, I'll probably move to a 60 grit, a 120, and then an A100 Trizact because it leaves a very clean finish. I'm starting to encroach my center line that I scribed earlier. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting pressure towards the spine of the knife to drive that line a little further up without removing material at the edge. So as I'm grinding, I have my hands close into my body. I don't have my arms out. They're close into my body, they're really stable, and all I'm doing is shifting my weight from one foot to the other. I'm super happy with the bevels on this right now. They're not perfect, but I can work with them. And um, right now I'm gonna take off the file guide and I'm gonna take off these sharp corners. All right, we're just about ready for heat treat. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, as you can see, our tang is tapered in both dimensions now, and I've cut in uh, two small shoulders on either side of the tang, right here where my fingers are. 
I'm gonna do a little bit of file work right now um, because these blanks come annealed. And so I'd rather file this right now while it's soft versus after heat treat while it's partially hardened. All right, our knife is ready for heat treat. I'm gonna be using our Paragon oven. It's going to get up to 1570 degrees for heat treat. And we're gonna be quenching in Parks 50 quench oil. So I know a lot of you guys don't have an oven, but you might have a forge or a torch. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into Google and search steel temperature colors and go to images. I have a really nice chart right here where you can see what color the steel is gonna be at a given temperature. So we're gonna heat treat 1075 at about 1570 degrees. So on the chart right here, that shows the steel at roughly a reddish orange color. And also those of you who are heat treating in a forge, another pro tip is get yourself a piece of square tubing and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the tube in your forge, stick your knife in there, and this tube is gonna protect the knife from the harsh environment of the forge. It's gonna help it to scale up less. It'll be a lot less crispy when you take it out and heat treat it. All right, we are up to temperature. I am ready to quench the knife. I've got some welding gloves on. I got my tank right here. So it's just gonna be one smooth movement into the oil. Let's do it. Okay, we got scale popping off the knife. That's always a good sign. And I believe we're pretty darn straight. Sounds pretty good. The file is not removing any material. And it's got that high pitched skating file noise. We're gonna put this blade back in the oven for a temper cycle. Um, after heat treat, this blade is hard, hard, super brittle. If I drop this on the ground right now, it would shatter like glass. So we're gonna give it a little extra heat, soften it up a little bit. Um, we're gonna do two two-hour cycles at 400 degrees, and then this thing should be ready to rock. All right, we're heat treated and tempered. We're gonna go back into the grinding room and refinish it. All right, I'm really happy with that. We're gonna head back outside, and now we're gonna move on to hand sanding. I might go to 400, 600 grit or so, and then hit it on the buffer with a black compound. That should give it a nice, smooth satin finish. All right, we're good and buffed. The blade feels nice and smooth in the hands, and it leaves a pretty nice satin finish. That's something I've been experimenting with. I'm gonna head over to the drill press to drill the holes for the ironwood block and the G10 bolster. You don't need a drill press. You can do this with a hand drill. Just be careful and drill accurate holes. Uh, since we have a drill press, that's what I'm gonna use. All right, so now we're gonna use our brooch and our hand drill to file and drill out the rest of that material for the tang. And this is great because it doesn't have to be pretty. This area is gonna be covered up by that G10. All right, our tang fits into our block of wood nicely. So now we're gonna get ready to bed it. Essentially, we're gonna cast this void to the shape of our tang, but we're gonna be able to take the handle off the blade after it sets. I'm gonna be using this ugly can of Johnson's Paste Wax, and I'm gonna use it to coat our tang so the tang does not stick to the epoxy. At the same time, we're casting this void to shape. We're also gonna permanently epoxy this G10 to our wood. Awesome. So now we can grind and shape our handle without having the blade fixed to it, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about slipping and then accidentally grinding your freshly finished blade. To get the best results with ironwood, I highly suggest sanding up to a thousand grit and then hitting it on a buffer.
All right, so our handle is freshly buffed. This is one of my most favorite steps because after you sand up to a thousand grit and hit it on the buffing wheel, ironwood just pops and it looks fantastic. So we just got a couple more steps left. We're still not totally glued up yet. I'm gonna take some acetone and I'm gonna clean out any other wax that might still be in the handle right there. I'm also gonna wipe down the tang with acetone. And since this build knife box does not come with any pins, we're gonna have to do a couple extra steps to prep this tang for the final glue up. I'm gonna head back into the grinding room really quick right now, and I'm actually gonna grind some notches in the tang there and some voids for epoxy to sit in. All right, the epoxy should be set. So now I'm gonna head back into the grinding room just for a little bit. I'm gonna take a 400 grit belt just to break in that initial edge and then I'm gonna sharpen it on the work sharp grinder. Um, you can use stones or whatever you got at home to sharpen. Uh, this is just the way that I like to do it here. As soon as this is sharpened, I'm gonna give the whole thing a coat of Axe Wax and then it's good to go, ready to chop some stuff. All right, I'm super thrilled with how this turned out. This was a ton of fun. Um, the ironwood is popping. It looks great. The blade turned out awesome. It's good and sharp. Hidden tangs aren't quite my forte, so I was super glad to get some practice with this. Guys, if you're not gonna put a pin in there, make sure you do those couple extra steps to ensure that your handle and your blade have a good solid connection. If you've been wanting to make knives, the Build a Knife Box is an awesome product for beginners. So guys, we still have Hunter Recurves in stock at the Alex Steel Co. website. We also have some Sheep's Foot EDCs available if you guys wanna make those as well. It's been a hectic, hectic year, but we have something exciting in store for you. The next Build a Knife box is gonna be something that you can use in the kitchen. It's gonna be epic, you will not be cleave it. If you guys want additional resources, I highly suggest that you check out uh, Kurt Holland over at Free Hill Blades. I also suggest that you follow Mareko Mamasi of Mamasi Fire Arts. Give those guys a follow because they're very helpful and educational if you wanna get into knives or if you're really good and you wanna get to the next level. I hope that this video gave you enough information and advice and tips that you're confident to make this yourself. And guys, make sure that you're subscribed, like this video. We are planning on doing more stuff on this channel. So stay tuned, we got some fun stuff some more Build a Knife Box videos for you and some other fun content planned. So stay tuned.